Erev Tov, Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benu. You're watching Israeli News Live and the long uh, expected, uh, what would you call it? Everybody in fear of what the International Monetary Fund would be doing today. It has been expected that the U.S. dollar would be replaced by some other world currency. Uh, or a, a, a new global currency, in fact. We actually have not have brought this out ourselves as of yet on Israeli News Live, but we had heard uh, talk that there would be a replacement, a new, inter, a new global currency, uh, but that really is not the case. The IMF has set a new currency rates to reflect the yuan, the Chinese yuan, uh, debut as a global reserve currency. And that kind of tells me what they're going to do is try to get the market to last a little bit longer. And also, I think that the reason they're doing this with the Chinese is to try to get the Chinese to break their relationship with Russia so that they can dominate Syria uh, all over. So it looks like to me that the U.S. government, uh, along with some other the elites of the world, are trying to get the Chinese to come closer to the side of NATO and to pull away from Russia to break that bond that they have growing between the two of them. So they have now labeled the International, International Monetary Fund on Friday announced a recalculation of its stable major currencies ahead of Saturday's debut of the Chinese uh, one in the prestigious collection of reserve assets. Of course, that is followed with the euro, the British pound, the US dollar, which is a joke in itself uh, when we think about the U.S. dollar, but they have now considered the Chinese yuan. Now, I personally think if you want to look at stable currencies, the Chinese yuan and the Russian uh, ruble are probably the most stable in the world because both these countries here have more of their economies under control and are backing their, their monies by gold and precious uh, metals, etc. In fact, Russia probably is the most stable of all the currencies because even with all the sanctions that are going on, we see that Russia uh, owns still 30% of the world's natural resources are in Russia. Imagine that one country holding 30% of the world's natural resources. And even the Chinese uh, President Xi had made the comment at the G20 summit that was going on in China that Russia was an economy to look at it as, as an example to the entire world. Uh, so if you ever want to invest just in a currency, I would think that would be the smartest move you could make. Uh, but we do know, too, that Germany, the German banks, are teetering right now. They're very, uh, very unstable. There's been a lot of concern that they may uh, falter and fail, especially the German bank, the Deutsche Bank, which I personally believe is caused by the sanctions that were placed on Russia, thanks to President Barack Obama. So all the Germans should be able to send him a nice thank you letter for his intervening in the European uh, economic stabilization, because once they place sanctions on Russia, Germany was the most affected nation of all who does a lot of trading with Russia. Not to mention, we can also thank Obama for the refugee crisis. I know they try to blame it on Russia. Not to say that Russia is not contributing with the war that's continuing on in Syria. But again, it still goes back to President Barack Obama, because when Russia goes in there to do away with ISIS, he's very successful in the beginning, but of course Obama can't allow that to happen, so he rushes all of his forces in there to only make it more mayhem in the Middle East. Uh, so the destabilization and sending more than a million refugees to Germany, not counting those in France, uh, Greece, and, and Austria, and all these other countries here, giving them all this free money, free money, free housing, free everything else. Imagine what that's like on a weekly basis for over a million people, giving away all this free money, and then top it off, put sanctions on Russia to where you can't do any trade and your businesses are all suffering. Well, it's going to cause a tremendous pressure on the German banks. Makes you kind of think about David Wilkerson's uh, uh, vision that he had back in 1973. Someone shared that with me. In fact, Bonnie shared that with me today on our radio broadcast that I'm doing now in America called Flashpoint. Uh, that's actually sponsored by Hebrew Nation Radio for those of you that might would like to catch that program. Uh, continuing on, though, in other news as well. Uh, the mention of all these things that go on in behind the scenes, the U.S. signed a secret document to lift U.N. sanctions on Iranian banks. Administration-backed measures on the same day, Tehran released four American citizens from prison. Uh, this is on the Wall Street Journal, uh, bringing out this article right here. So, 
You know, I know there are some people that really got upset with Obama for doing that, saying, you know, you're basically trading out uh, for, you know, hostages for, for money. But I guess if I was one of the hostages, I would probably be pretty glad that he did. So I guess there is more than one way to look at that and probably not the most favored way by most people. But that's a thought that I looked at anyway. Uh, here is an article from True News. Now, I've already seen this on German media because here in Europe, we saw the interview that was being done with the Al Nursa commander uh, who states that U.S., Israel, Saudis are backing ISIS. Uh, and, of course, the United States is already denying this. They said that this is not so. They're not backing that, uh, the, the ISIS group there. But I wanted to point out something to you that really caught my attention in the interview that this man does. Abu al-Ez told Kolonir Stott uh, Azinger newspaper, the journalist uh, uh, Jürgen Todenhofer, that the U.S., Israel, Saudi Arabia support and arm terrorist groups in Syria. Now, I can kind of believe that, unfortunately, for uh, both me being an American and Jewish uh, for the country of Israel, my, my countrymen that I do love dearly, but I hate to see the facts are true and they are stacking up against us more and more that, yes, indeed, they probably do arm ISIS uh, and these other groups like al Nursa in order to topple Bashar al-Assad. At this point, Obama really doesn't care how he does it so long as the plan is actually done. Well, that goes so much for the, for the saying that Pope Francis, and I'll come right back to this in a moment, but Pope Francis today uh, speaking, uh, this is on Reuters, an ex-Soviet Georgia pope issued a veiled criticism of Russia, speaking that no other nation has a right to go into a sovereign nation. Well, maybe, Pope Francis, you might want to think about if you're going to criticize somebody, why don't you criticize Obama? Unless, of course, you sent him to Syria and, of course, Ethiopia, where the Catholic Church has a lot of asset in the, uh, the, you know, the gas companies that they have that are doing those uh, explorations in Ethiopia where the people got pushed out and murdered and everything else. Uh, the pot might not want to call kettle black in that case there. Now, I can't say that it's not the case with the situation with Georgia, but there's a lot of things about Georgia that I've never gone into with you before that might shock you to know the truth about. Um, that doesn't mean that, uh, that Vladimir Putin is a saint by no means. I'm sure he's got plenty of his own faults, and yes, we have seen some of those ourselves and bring those out when we run into those issues, but we try to under, uncover truth in a world of global bias. Going back to this Al Nursa uh, interview that was done here, what caught my attention here is when the statement here, he says, when uh, Jabat Al Nursa was besieged, we had officers from Turkey, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, Israel, and America here. Experts in the use of satellites, rockets, reconnaissance, and thermal security cameras. Now, the fact that this man right here, his name is Abu El Ez, this guy right here that you see on your screen now, in an interview with German newspaper, and they recorded it, so you can listen to it. It's, they have subtitles in German, he's speaking in Arabic, but he speaks about, and of course, this is not, um, this is when Jahabat al Nursa was besieged. He's not saying where it was besieged at, we had officers from Turkey, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, Israel, and America here. Experts in the use of satellites, rockets, reconnaissance, and thermal security camera. I haven't had a chance to really look at uh, real quick to see where that besieged uh, area was taking place. Um, I am assuming that this may be uh, when they were besieged in Aleppo. I am not sure of that as of yet. But the point being here is that there were officers from Turkey, Notice again, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, Israel, and America. All right, let me put that big enough on the screen for you guys because I can. I look back real quick and I see you guys probably just do not see what I'm speaking about here. So let's take a look at this right here. Um, uh, nope, wrong one. Sorry about that. Let me let me scroll down to the right place here. Uh, okay, right here. This is the point. Let me make it a little bigger for you guys. Okay. 
All right, he says, let's read a little bit. The government forces have an advantage because the aircraft and missile launchers, but we have the American-made tow missiles, and the situation in some area is under control. One question, if U.S.-made tow missiles were intended for uh, FSA, no, that's the Free Syrian Army, no, the missiles were given to us directly, he answers. So the United States is giving the missiles directly to the Al-Nursa group. Then he says, when Jahabat Al-Nursa was besieged, we had officers from Turkey. Notice this here. When Jahabat al-Nursa was besieged, we had officers from Turkey, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, Israel, and America here. Experts in the use of satellites, rockets, reconnaissance, and thermal security cameras. This is what the man claims there, okay? Now, remember the news that we broke. We first saw this from FARS. We found out that Sputnik... Arabic language was covering this as well. Later, we had several different me uh, uh, U.S. media outlets that picked it up. Um, one of those, uh, 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 gosh, uh, uh, Veterans Today was one of the ones that covered it. But the most important one was when we saw it being covered on Russian television. Uh, and that was with, uh, it'll come to me in a minute here, uh, Pravda. Pravda. They have their own, uh, you know, state-run television media there, and I assume state-run. It may not be state-run, but anyway, Pravda actually reported this strike that was done by Russian forces that hit an intel center in Aleppo. It said 30 Israeli foreign intelligence officers killed in Russia, caliber missile attack in Aleppo. Now, FARS is an Iranian news source, which most people are going to say, oh, we don't believe it because it's Iranian. Too many other people have already backed it up. As I said, Pravda... Uh, Sputnik uh, Arabic language has picked it up. Several different U.S. media outlets were saying it, but they were afraid to say who was killed involved in the, in the act. But according to this one here, and they take it right from Sputnik, and I'll take you to Sputnik so you can see, this was the Arabic language Sputnik site that actually brings it. They show the missiles being fired uh, out from the Russian Federation. And it actually does look like it was from a submarine, but it may have been a ship, whatever the case may be. I did translate the Arabic on this already. It is accurate. Fars was not doing the article on their own. They were quoting from the Sputnik Arabic, which is a Russian media, that indeed the Russian government had launched a strike uh, on, uh, on, the, uh, on a position that, that contained, uh, let me just read what it says, a Russian warship fired three caliber missiles at foreign officers, coordination operation room, and Dar Eza region in the western part of Aleppo near Saman Mountain, killing 30 Israeli and Western officers. The Arabic language service of Russian Sputnik News Agency quoted battlefield source in Aleppo as saying on Wednesday, the operations room was located in the western part of Aleppo province in the middle of the uh, sky high Saman Mountain and Old Caves. The region is deep into a chain of mountains. Several U.S. Turkish, Saudi, Qatari, and British officers were also killed along with the Israeli officers. The foreign officers who were killed in Aleppo operations room were directing the terrorist attacks in Aleppo. All right, now, when I translated the Arabic Sputnik language on this, that's exactly what it says. Okay, just like you see here. All right, 30 Israeli and Western officers. All right, the operation room was located in a part of Aleppo province in the middle sky high up in the old caves, the region in deep into a chain of mountains. Several U.S., U.S., Turkish, Saudi, Qatari, and of course they mentioned British officers were killed in that. Now notice what he says here. All right, he spoke about there being besieged. We had officers from Turkey, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, Israel, and America. Now he doesn't mention British in his but they were teaching experts in the use of satellites, rockets, reconnaissance, and thermal security cameras. You see what I'm saying, guys? What we're seeing is now we're getting more and more evidence seeping out that, yes, indeed, from a different source of news, showing that, indeed, the U.S., the Saudis, the Israelis, uh, and the Turks and the Qatarians were actually there inside of Syria working in conjunction to overthrow the Bashar al-Assad's government. Uh, and they're working with al-Nursa. According to some reports by Russia, they're working with the ISIS groups as well. That's why you don't see much attacks on ISIS by uh, American uh, uh, 
air, air campaigns. He also said we got 500 million Syrian pounds, around $2.3 million from Saudi Arabia to capture the infantry school in Al uh, Muslimiyah. Years ago, we received 1.5 million Kuwaiti dinars, around $500,000 in Saudi Arabia, and 5 million. Money came from the governments of those states, not private individuals. Israel is now giving us support because Israel is at war with Syria and with Hezbollah. West has paved the way of jihadists coming to Syria. Now, when he mentions this right here, Israel is now giving us support because Israel is at war with Syria and with Hezbollah. And that makes more sense why Israel is involved in it, because what Israel would like to see is that the Hezbollah, which truly is an enemy for Israel, and I can certainly see why Israel would be involved in that, that particular area there, because if they can weaken Hezbollah, who has launched attacks on Israel on many occasions, then in that case there, this may be the reason why Israel is really there. But are they there also because they kind of got to go along and play along with the Americans in order to topple Bashar al-Assad, but their real aim is to get rid of Hezbollah? Could be, and it also may be because there's Iranian soldiers there as well, and it's another enemy of Israel. It is such a jumbled up, mixed up mess, guys. I don't even know what to say about it. Another thing, too, I want to bring to your attention, though, as well, besides uh, the Pope speaking out against Russia, uh, giving a veiled threat to Russia, they say he kind of held his words back a little bit because he did not want to upset the relationship he's trying to build with the Russian Orthodox Church there. Uh, but he does pretty much threaten Israel. But the Pope also labeled alternative media a weapon of destruction, according to True News here. I did see the account where he speaks about it. This happened on September 29th, 2016. But he actually says, Pope labels alternative media a weapon of destruction. Pope Francis speaks as he leaves the weekly audience in St. Peter's Square at the Vatican on September 21st, 2016. He says, journalists based on gossip or rumor is a form of terrorism. Well, Mr. Pope Francis, we don't base ours on rumors. But it does give concern to me that it would be worded in such a way because now that they're going to hand over the internet to the some kind of Saudi group from what I understand that's working for the United Nations uh, some kind of I don't know human organization you know I'm sure they're going to do away with a lot of alternative media this is why we keep telling you guys we also have more than one type of account available uh, the Noon Institute also has its own YouTube channel check it in the uh, subject line below here uh, you'll be able to see where we have, this is for teaching only. It's not the news that we do there. Vimo is where we'll also be doing news as well, just in case for some reason they whack Israeli News Live here on YouTube because you have to remember uh, the head of Google and uh, YouTube there met with Pope Francis already. So I'm sure they've been making plans all along to get rid of alternative media. Uh, I'll be very surprised if they don't whack, whack Alex Jones right along with the rest of those out here that are trying to tell you what's really going on. And we know Israeli News Live does bring out a lot of things that really upsets a lot of people when it comes to exposing what the West is really doing. And of course, we also expose what the Pope of Rome is doing, even though he runs around the world saying, peace, peace, when there is no peace. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Here